Previously, we had seen that Mr. Daniel, one of our oldest clients, wanted to expand his business. We told him the different benefits and negatives of starting up different types of organizations like partnership firms and joint stock companies. So he called us up and informed us that based on our discussion, he had finally decided to go with a partnership firm. They set up a firm called Messrs JDJ. A partnership firm structure will help him to bring in more hands, more capital and better supervision of the business. The different tasks can be divided as per specialization of each partner and their area of interest and there would be also spreading of risks in the business. Now after about 6 months from the date of commencement of his new partnership he visited us in our office along with Mr John and Mr Jack his partners and we had a very detailed talk he then showed us his partnership agreement which is also termed as a partnership deed or articles of partnership let's take a look at it these were some of their important terms and conditions. It shows the profit and loss sharing ratio. 5 is to 3 is to 2. Who will act on activities of the firm? Who is eligible for a salary? They decided that Mr. Jack was entitled to receive 10,000 as salary because he will be responsible for the day-to-day -day activities or affairs of the firm and Mr. John and Mr. Daniel decided to contribute for the increasing sale and therefore each of them will receive a commission on net sales. Since a firm has a separate entity from that of its owners, the partnership firm also pays an interest to partners for their capital contribution or if the partners lend anything over and above the capital as loan to the business. Then if a partner withdraws cash or kind from the firm, interest on drawings charge would be 10% per annum. Apart from this, many other things were also mentioned like the contact information of the firm and of each of the partners, how would they operate their bank accounts, who would have authority for signing on checks, all the provisions of admission and retirement of a partner, the different methods of valuing goodwill, how will they wind up or dissolve the firm if needed? So everything, all these terms are already stated on their partnership deed. Now the partners wanted to know how accounting is done for partnership firms. Well, actually it is nothing different than accounting for sole proprietorship. If our basic accounting fundamentals are strong, there's no need to worry at all. The principles of accounting are the same and the process of accounting remains the same irrespective of the organization structure of business. At the end, we're going to prepare the same trading account, profit and loss account and balance sheet. The only thing new that you would come across is maybe transactions related to partners, like they may get interest on capital by firm, they may make drawings, they may get commission or salary as agreed upon on their partnership deed. Mr. Daniel wanted to know how those entries are passed. The same accounting principle of debit and credit needs to be followed and there is no other complication. Uh, you know, it may require a different kind of calculation while distributing profit amongst partners. But again, to emphasize the accounting treatment and the accounting rules will remain the same. Mr. Daniel and his partners were so relieved to hear this. Okay, now let's see some important provisions pertaining to partnership firms. On the partnership deed of Messrs. JDJ, we can see that the partners are bringing in capital. The entry is the same, that is cash account debit to capital account. So this is how their capital accounts would look like. Now, as we know, partnership firm pays an interest to partners for their capital contribution. So Mr. Daniel will receive 7% on initial capital, 90,000, that is 6,300. 
Mr. John will receive 5,250 and Mr. Jack will receive an interest of 4,200. So we debit interest on capital and credit effect shows on the partner's capital account. Similarly, if a commission or salary is given to partners as decided, the effect would be the same. Next, suppose one of the partners during the year, say on the sixth month according to the accounting year, wants to withdraw some of his capital in cash or in the form of goods. So say if Mr. Jack has withdrawn cash of 5,000, the business would now charge the partner an interest on drawings. At the end of the accounting year, in the financial statement, the effect would show an interest on drawings account credit and partners capital debit so that comes up to 250 now what about the profits and the losses he asked they're calculated as per the agreed profit sharing ratio suppose the firm's profit for one accounting year is 20,000 now their PSR ratio is 5 is to 3 is to 2 on the partnership deed which means it is a total of 10 parts, 5 plus 3 plus 2. So one part profit is 2000. So Mr. Daniel gets 5 parts, that is 2000 into 5, 10,000. Mr. John gets 6000 and Jack 4000. So these were their profits. Profit in profit and loss account will be transferred to partner's capital. If there is a loss, then that too is shared amongst the partners. That's pretty much everything about the accounting. There's nothing difficult, no change from our accounting concepts or principles used for proprietorship. He then wanted to know ways in which partnership accounts is to be presented in a systematic way. So there are many ways which are recommended or followed as per general accepted standards. Partnership firms are recommended to make a profit and loss appropriation account which is like an extension of profit and loss account. But the difference is in profit and loss account the firm's profit is calculated, which all the outside interested parties would like to know. It's an actual profit or loss from normal business operation, but it does not consider the appropriation of profit amongst partners, that is, how profit is divided amongst partners, who's going to get the interest on capital, etc. All that may be shown separately in the appropriation account. This account is made especially for the partners to know how business profits are used or distributed and it is considered a separate account. Now let's talk about the presentation of the capital account. Some business prefer separating the capital account as partner's capital and partner's current account for presentation purpose. They present just the initial capitals brought in by the partners and any additional capital during the year in the partner's capital account whereas all the other entries like withdrawals, interest, salaries all that they record in the partner's current account. This makes it easier for the readers of financial statements. It is also easy to monitor and maintain discipline amongst partners to keep aside capital introduced in the business and not to mix it up with the several other transactions. This is called as fixed capital method. Whereas some partnership firms prefer to present all these transactions in partner's capital account itself. In that case, partner's capital amount fluctuates each year because all the adjustments are made in the same account and the balance carried forward is the new capital account for their next accounting period. And that's all about presentation. Mr. Daniel and his partners were so relieved to hear this. 
amazed to know that it was so simple. Hope this session was helpful to you. If you enjoyed it, please share it with your friends and click on the like button to let us know. Also, we love seeing your comments and feedback, so leave them down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, so you can receive all the latest updates. We are working on more such interesting sessions for you guys. Thanks for all your support.